and welcome to Crash Course Cryptozoology. Today I'd like to bring your attention to photographs that I believe are very important to cryptozoology as a whole. These photographs are very well known and if you don't know them you certainly know the subject of these photographs uh, which I will explain in a bit here. We are talking about the Mayaka skunk ape photographs today. It's a set of two photographs and the reason they are so important is, well, you'll see in a bit here. These photographs have a very interesting backstory, and when you actually look at them, they follow up on that story with an almost better one, perhaps a better one. And the thing about both these stories is not only are they interesting, not only are they compelling, but uh, they could very well be true stories. There are a few things about the stories that we should all take with a grain of salt, of course, that's with any story. The stories presented here are very interesting, and hard to explain away. Before I go any further, and before I even show you the photographs, uh, I would like to explain the backstory behind these photographs, how they came to be, allegedly, and that will require some explanation. So if you'd like to skip that, I will go over briefly what everything really means in a smaller way after I'm done the more in-depth explanation. The Mayaka Skunk Ape photographs were allegedly taken in September, late September of 2000, or early October of 2000. The date is unclear and they were sent to the Sarasota Sheriff's Department in Florida on December 22nd, 2000, I believe, so around late December. The photographs were sent in by an anonymous source, and soon there were people who actually picked up the photographs and brought them to the foreground of cryptozoology. Most of the credit for that goes to David Barcassi, who I believe is just a resident who happened to find out about these photographs and publicize them, and Lauren Coleman, who is believed uh, by many to be the world's foremost cryptozoologist. Not only were these photographs sent to the Sarasota County Sheriff's Department, but uh, with them was also sent an anonymous letter. And uh, again, I will read that letter now so it's more in-depth, but for those of you who don't want to hear me read it or don't want to read it yourselves, I will not only provide a link in the description so that you can read it yourself later, I will also provide a brief explanation of what they mean after I actually read the letter. For those of you who want to stick around to hear it, this is what the letter read. Dear Sir or Madam, Enclosed, please find some pictures I took in late September or early October of 2000. My husband says he thinks it is an orangutan. Is someone missing an orangutan? It is hard to judge from the photos how big this orangutan really is. It is in a crouching position in the middle of standing up from where it was sitting. It froze as soon as the flash went off. I didn't even see it as I took the first picture because it was so dark. As soon as the flash went off for the second time, it stood up and started to move. I then heard the orangutan walk off into the brushes. From where I was standing, I judged it as being about six and a half to seven feet tall in a kneeling position. As soon as I realized how close it was, I got back to the house. It had an awful smell that lasted well after it had left my yard. The orangutan was making deep whoomp noises. It sounded much farther away than it turned out to be. If I had known it was as close just to the hedge roll as it was, I wouldn't have walked up as close as I did. I'm a senior citizen and this animal had come out of the hedge roll after me, there wasn't a thing I could have done about it. I was about 10 foot away from it when it stood up. I'm concerned because my grandchildren like to come down and explore in my backyard. An animal this big could hurt someone seriously. For two nights prior, it had been taking apples that my daughter brought down from up north, off our back porch. These pictures were taken on the third night it had raided my apples. It only came back one more night after that, and took some apples that my husband had left out in order to get a better look at it. We left out four apples. I cut two of them in half. The orangutan only took the two whole apples. We didn't see it take them. We waited up, but eventually had to go to bed. We got a dog back there now, and as far as we can tell, the orangutan hasn't been back. Please find out where this animal came from and who it belongs to. It shouldn't be loose like this. Someone will get hurt. I called a friend that used to work with animal control back up north, and he told us to call the police. I don't want any fuss or people with guns trapsing around behind our house. We live near 175, and I'm afraid this orangutan could cause a serious accident if someone hit it. I once hit a deer that wasn't even a quarter of the size of this animal and totaled my car. At the very least, this animal belongs in a place like Bush Garden, where it can be looked after properly. Why haven't people been told that an animal this size is on the loose? How are people to know how dangerous this could be? If I had known an animal like this was loose, I wouldn't have approached it. I saw on the news that monkeys that get loose can carry hepatitis and are very dangerous. Please look after the situation. I don't want my backyard to turn to someone else's circus. God bless. I prefer to remain anonymous. Definitely a very compelling letter with a lot of really good information. For those of you who did not want to hear me read the letter or don't want to read it yourselves, what basically happened is an elderly woman, it is presumed to be a woman anyway, 
and her husband had an encounter one night when the creature that they believed had been stealing apples that their daughter was bringing off their porch, they found it. The woman took a picture of it, two pictures actually. She's concerned that it's an orangutan that escaped during, I believe, a storm that happened shortly before this occurred. She was basically writing an anonymous letter to the authorities in the area, warning them about the incident and asking why people didn't know an orangutan was on the loose. Now, that's interesting because as far as the public knows, there was no orangutan on the loose. There is no record that I can find of orangutans being loose, which is interesting because we are dealing with a large creature here that uh, she 100% seems to believe is an orangutan or an ape. With that being said, I will now show you the photographs that were taken by the woman. And uh, what you're looking at now are the world famous at this point, Mayaka skunk ape photographs. For those of you who don't know, the reason they are called the skunk ape photographs is because uh, many believe that the subject of these photographs is actually a Sasquatch. In Florida, the Sasquatch is often called the skunk ape due to the smell, which is interesting because the woman in her note actually says that it left a very foul odor behind even after it left, it lingered there. And an analysis of the letter definitely finds that there are attributes about this alleged creature that will match both primate behavior in general and what is possibly Sasquatch traits, like the smell and like the evasiveness. Now, looking at the actual photographs themselves, one thing is clear to me, and that's that this is very likely not an orangutan, and here's why. Uh, you will notice similarities, of course, if I were to say, well, which ape does this look like? I would say it bears a striking resemblance to an orangutan. But there are some differences that make me think twice. For one thing, the subject has black hair or fur, and um, while there has been a very small population of black orangutans found in, I believe, Borneo, None of them have ever been to the U.S. Could this be an illegal uh, trafficking animal? I suppose it could be. But I find that very unlikely since the black orangutans were in such a small number and because they were left undiscovered for a very long time. It does look like the proportions in the body build of an orangutan down to the teeth, although I will say when you look at the teeth in the second photograph as it seems to open its mouth more, the bottom teeth do seem a bit bigger than they're supposed to be, but we'll leave that at that because we can't say too much about that. We will get back to the teeth later on, however. Going into the analysis, this is definitely a large creature. And I say that because the woman says that it's about six, seven feet tall, kneeling down. And the thing about this is that we actually do have something we compare that height to. And of course, people saying something is six, seven feet tall doesn't mean that it's six, seven feet tall. But usually it means that it's somewhere around there. Allow me to explain. So... We see her uh, garden, if you like to call it, in front of the creature here where it's allegedly taking these apples. That could even be an apple right there at the bottom, I'm not too sure. But um, we see that there's a specific type of plant. And this plant is actually the silver saw palmetto plant. It's uh, kind of like a palm tree as a bush is probably the best way to describe it. And these plants can actually grow to about six and a half feet in height, which is very interesting. At the smallest, they're about three feet in height. So let's be a little bit generous with leaning more towards the scientific side of things, if you want to call it that, and say that these silver saw palmettos are five feet. They're not fully grown yet, but they're getting there. If we're to believe that this creature is kneeling down, that still makes this creature five feet tall kneeling down. And um, if we were to stand up, the creature would probably be around five and a half to six feet tall. And if these are full grown palmettos, this creature is around seven to eight feet tall when standing up which is, um, of course, that depends entirely on the leg structure. It could have very short legs if this is a real creature, which would be very interesting to see, but we don't see legs here. So uh, I would assume that this creature, at its shortest, is about six feet tall. And if it is a creature that is tallest, it is around seven and a half to maybe even eight feet tall, which is a very big animal. An animal, I'll remind you, that isn't an orangutan, and actually is not like an ape in many ways. Of course, what we're looking at here definitely looks like an ape, and it could very well be. But here's something interesting. It would be the only ape to have an eye shine. There is actually not an eye shine present in all apes, all great apes, and all humans. There are very few primates that have eye shines, and all great apes do not. And that includes orangutans, gorillas, chimpanzees, humans, bonobos, and yet here, when the camera flashes, what do you see? You see an eye shine. You see an orangey-red eye shine. Again, you see the teeth being bared here, which is kind of where we get to the idea that this is probably, if it is a creature, it's an ape. Apes will, a lot of apes will actually bare their teeth as a sign of saying, 
hey, I don't like that. And of course, when you're having a meal and something flashes a bright light right in front of you, you're likely to be displeased, and so is an ape. Another thing that lends credibility to the idea that this is an ape is uh, not only the arm length. I mean, look at that. That is incredible arm length right there, especially if it's kneeling. Uh, because even then, the arm hangs down so low that it's standing up. It's still a pretty long arm that goes beyond the waist, it would seem. Uh, of course, I can't really say how long the arm is without making uh, a guesstimate in some case, but I would say that if the ferns in front of it, or I should say the palmettos in front of it, are fully grown, or we'll go with the five measurement, actually, with a five foot tall measurement, that arm is getting close to four feet in length, which is a huge arm, a really huge arm. Imagine the whole arm span, uh, which would actually be around eight feet, coincidentally, which is, uh, according to the ratio of humans, at least, how tall you are. So maybe we are looking at something that's eight feet tall here, which is very interesting, very compelling, and uh, to an extent worrying. We look closer at it, and we look down here, and we see a hand. We see something that even appears to have five fingers, and what could be a thumb behind the plants here. The hand is clear in the first photograph. It's not so clear in the second, but what we do see is something that I would dare say looks a bit like a fingernail at the end of a finger. That could not be what that is, but uh, it certainly looks that way at first glance. Again, looking at the actual structure of how this creature is built, yes, it does look very much like an orangutan, but it has qualities that orangutans don't, and come to think of it, orangutans do not grow to anywhere near six to eight feet tall. They grow to about four and a half feet tall. That, if that's an orangutan, it should only be as tall as that arm, that single arm, is long. There were no orangutans reported missing. Uh, the woman has not come forth. We should note that the person does not want to come forward, and a lot of times that means that there's something to hide, but not in all cases. And here, if she's hiding something, and this is a hoax, this is probably the best Bigfoot hoax ever seen, unless the Patterson film is a hoax, and that would just put the skunk ape photographs at its second place. It has eye shine that uh, no apes have. It has a height, or a presumed height, an estimated height, that no apes have. It has an arm length that no humans have, which could be done with arm extensions, admittedly. It has an arm length that is incredibly impressive and does lend to the idea that it is a very tall animal. It has teeth that, while they resemble ape teeth, are not quite right. It has color that the ape that it most resembles does not have. Uh, it even has a beard, it seems, and um, orangutans tend to actually have that feature, many of them do. And it's graying, but if this isn't, again, this is not an orangutan, so it can't be that. It has what appears to be visible fingers and opposable thumb, fingernails even, very fine detail. This is not a gorilla, obviously, because gorillas just don't look like this. Neither do chimpanzees, neither do bonobos. If we're looking at a hoax, it's a very, very good one. And if it's not, we're looking into the face of a skunk ape. Again, it has been difficult getting a follow-up on this while skunk ape sightings continue. Um, the woman has not come forth, and so far, the Mayaka skunk ape photographs trail has run cold. Let me know what you all think about these photographs. Do you believe the subject is real? Do you believe it's a hoax? Uh, is there something about the subject that I have forgotten to mention that could very well prove what creature it is? Uh, how big do you think it is? Let me know all your questions and all your thoughts on these photographs. I would love to hear them. That being said, until next time.